Our next issue is the state of the economy. And rightly so because a number of surveys and also the polls show that the economy is number one when it comes to the five key issues that would inform voter decisions. And we're going to put that on the screen right now. There are about four surveys now. The Global Info Analytics shows that the economy is number one. Jobs, obviously, they, they, these are intertwined. You cannot have growth in the economy and also not have jobs being created. In fact, in this country, we've had jobless growth at some point. And so that's why you see jobs coming in just after the economy and education, roads, healthcare. The NCC survey also captured employment, jobs in the, in the economy in the first five key issues for voters. Afrobarometer survey also has unemployment as number one, the economy in there as well, the top five. The CODEO, CODEO Coalition of Domestic Election Observers pre-election report also captured unemployment as number one and then the economy in there as well. So it is not out of place that we spend some time to just about uh, 27 days to election day, to 28 days to election day, December 7, to talk about this all important matter to the voters, that is the economy. What is the state of your personal economy? Professor Godfrey Bofkin is a professor of finance at the University of Ghana Business School, a respected finance analyst across the world. Professor Godfrey Bobkin, good morning. Thank you for joining yes. us. Good morning. And good morning to our cherished listeners and viewers. And good morning to my bosses. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you are the boss. You are the boss. Uh, <laughs> the economy you is in your hands. Uh, uh, you, you have the economy right in front of you. And it's tempting all of us. When you are making your point, you show it. Um, also, let me welcome Dr. Abdul Ganeo who is a technical advisor at the Ministry of Finance of the Republic of Ghana, so also a member of the MPP. Dr. Abdul Ghanil, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning for having me, Alfred, and good morning to everyone. I would also be joined by uh, a data scientist. Uh, he's joining us from Canada, a good friend of mine, Alfred Apia. Alfred Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Alfred, and thank you for having me. Perfect. Now, uh, uh, so uh, let me start off with you, uh, m m Dr. Ganil. Now, to the extent that we've seen, in fact, your boss, the finance minister, makes reference to the indicators of the economy trending towards pre-COVID that's indicators or statistics. And then also we've had the flag bearer of your party and by extension the vice president talk about jobs that have been created because the fulcrum of every economic growth should be the jobs that have been created. This, this 2.6 million jobs have been created. Do, 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 you, do you believe it? Do, do, you, do you have basis for this, this particular statistic? That's, the vice president put out there? Well, I think that um, we have to understand that once an economy grows, certainly it creates jobs. So the statistics that the vice president has put out regarding job creation is certainly true. Um, we have come from quite a difficult period that everyone understands. Um, anytime I mention that, we will be told that it is overflowed. You know, the kind of impact that COVID had on the economy. But beyond that, every indicator of the economy shows that the economy has rebounded very strongly. Um, we indicated that we have turned the corner around the media review of the 2023 budget. And since then, the positive trajectory has been on. And but, as we speak, for example, if you look at the first and the second quarter growth of the economy, it has been highly significant. I see. And to the extent that this has been quite consistent 
for the year or should tell everyone that indeed the economy is growing and once an economy is growing certainly it is creating more jobs you well know, but um, but but yes, yes, where the, the concern is. If you look at the breakdown of exactly where we are seeing growth, as you made reference to, the mining sector, right, is contributing a chunk to the GDP growth rate that we are seeing now. How many Ghanaians have a stake in the mining sector? And how has this growth trickled down to the, the personal economies of people? because the cost of living is still high for people. Well, um, and Alfred, you shouldn't look at only the mining sector. The industrial sector is made up of a number of subsectors, and the average growth for the second quarter was 9.3%. And indeed, aside from industry, you also need to look at growth in agriculture and also growth in the services sector. The, the agricultural sector, for example, grew by 5.4% in the second quarter. And then also the services sector grew by 5.8%. Now, if you look at that second sector growth, the average growth was 6.9%. Then the, the first quarter growth was 4.0%. So registering an average of about 5.5% over the two quarters. It is on the basis of this that we have had to revise the GDP growth target twice this year alone. By the CBA budget review of this year, we have revised it to 3.1% from a 2.8% growth target for 2024. And just after last review, by the IMF staff, uh, for example, we have been able to revise growth to about 4.1% again for the year 2024. So that certainly tells that the economy has grown for three quarters. I, 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 I and see. The trajectory, a lot of, and the trajectory is that forward to the end of 2024, we expect a much higher growth compared to 2023, compared to 2024, when we actually got the aftershocks of the COVID pandemic, you know, uh, moving from what was supposed to be a health pandemic now into an economic crisis that the whole world has to undergo but, for the year 2021 and 2022. So, so the trajectory is that the economy has been growing, and once it continues to grow, certainly it creates more jobs. But so it's, it's on that point that, so you say that you, you believe that the 2.6 million jobs Dr. Bamiya talks about has indeed been created. It's a reflection of, of the fact. Exactly. It's certainly a at the end of the day, if an economy is not growing, certainly it doesn't create jobs. Okay. So, so when the economy begins to grow, and you can see that across all the subsectors, whether it is industry, it is agriculture, it is the services sector, then certainly it tells that it okay, is adding more this, jobs. Because you are the economy, finance ministry, because you are the finance ministry, this 2.6 million that Dr. Bamiya talks about, what's the source of that data? Um, I cannot exactly tell you where that is coming from. At the end of the day, an economy is made up of many sectors. No. And at the end of the day, you have various ministries, departments, and but, agencies. Do, Dr. Ghanayu, so you, 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 Dr. Ghanayu, you first indicate that you cannot tell me the source uh, of that no, data. No, no, When you are asking for a specific source, that will be inappropriate, right? Government, government of Ghana itself is a source in the sense that you have ministries, departments, and agencies. And at the end of the day, jobs that have been created across the MBAs are what you pull together to provide an indication of how many jobs have been created. And that is what it says. So if you are looking for a public source, for example, that can be problematic. You know, and that but, but that, 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 should be, that, should be, that should be easily verifiable because there, there, there must be 
a published source. For instance, if that specific, so, so that's the point, if, so that's if, the if there's a specific, I'm coming to a point, you. Dr. Ganyu, if there's okay, a specific, okay, there's okay, a specific okay, amount, I, I'm coming, there's a specific statistic that's put out, 2.6 million, the vice president was consistent and very clear in his words that the last time he checked the data, so he's making reference to a data source that 2.6 so, million so jobs the have last been created. Time he made reference to the data, the data here coming from the various ministries, coming from the various departments and coming from the various agencies of government. So you cannot have a specific source that you say, this is where I'm taking it from. At the end of the day, government or the whole process of governance is coordinated. So when ministry departments and agencies are creating jobs, it all comes to a certain point. And that is basically what the reference is. So whether it is at the level of the Ministry of Employment, for example, that this data can be found, that should that can easily be the case. But I see. you have you have gov government institutions across the place that are engaging in the employment of Ghanaians on a daily basis. So at any point in time you have to be able to collate all of this before you can tell how many jobs have been created over the period. So that's right. the point I'm making to you. Okay. So Dr. Baumia met the media on the on the twenty fifth of August. You remember that? Yes. During that meeting, a specific question was asked about the number of jobs created. He mentioned between two point one to two point three million jobs as of the twenty fifth of August. Then last week Sunday, when he met the youth, he put out this figure of 2.6 million jobs. Does that mean that between August and last week, which is the 1st of November, you've created about over 300,000 jobs? Alfred, the thing about the job creation is that it's on a day. Perhaps at the time Dr. Bombay was quoting between the 2.1 and 2.3 million jobs, it is possible that more jobs were even created that had, that, that had not been brought to his attention yet. And that was possibly why he gave you that particular range. So it is an ongoing process. You will see various ministry departments and agencies getting clearance on a regular basis from the Ministry of Finance to be able to employ people. So it is either they are in the process or they have already gone through the entire process and have engaged people. So it becomes very difficult for you to put a specific number to it. And that is why he gives you that range. So if from then up to now, later statistics or data have shown that 6 million jobs have now been created, he puts it out. And okay. it is even possible that from next week, that number could change as well. Mm -hmm. So job creating is a long going process. And as mm -hmm. MMDD are engaged in Ghanaians, clearly that data will continue to change. Well, Dr. Ghanil, uh, hold on. While we, we, and, and I need that answers to these specific questions. And this is where uh, Professor, Professor Bob can bring in. Because even though Dr. Ghanil talks about no specific data source for these 2.6 million jobs, Alfred is going to run through the data for us, but we looked at five data points. For instance, SNIT is number one. It's, a, it's an area to look at. Ghana's yeah. statistical yeah. service data is another. Does this, based on what you know, support the position that some 2.6 million jobs have been created? Well, thank you very much. Um, I hold a different view. Okay. Um, um, to the extent that the source hasn't been given. Of course, there are multiple sites that you can make references to, um, SNET and all of that. But let me just say that the traditional view had been that focus on growth and employment is a logical outcome. So once the economy is growing, it's almost certain to assume that jobs are being created, employment is being generated. We've moved away from that. Right. The trickle-down effect it hasn't happened. And that is why beyond pursuing economic growth, you must be deliberate 
about policies that will create employment, especially in the former wage economy. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Ghana, an analysis that have been done <coughs> indicate that <coughs> the growth employment relationship is not as strong as you see it in the literature. Mm -hmm. And that whether you use the arithmetic computation or even econometric analysis, mm -hmm. you get the impression that the employment response to growth it's not contemporaneous, so to speak. It's not that direct. And that is why these days in the literature, and even from the IMF, that focuses more on macroeconomy, heavy on statistics, uh, are adding to that line job-rich growth, that it is possible to have growth without or adequate jobs or employment. So these days we are talking about job-rich growth. Mm. It requires a certain intentionality to spell growth from the labor intensive subsectors of the economy. Th that is the angle to look at it from. But again, if the employ if the growth is job rich, it should not only reflect in the database of SNET, mm -hmm. it should not only reflect in the database of Ghana Statistical Service, it should also reflect in our tax paying population database with GRE. Mm. So, so the question I've been asking myself since this came on to the fore is that, okay, are uh, all these people captured in the tax paying bracket? That's if 2.6 million jobs yeah, because, have been created. Because the essence of creating jobs is that it's also in part your revenue envelope True. from direct income tax. So if you look at the data, as at now, the, the, the tax paying population in terms of active personal income taxpayers is just around 2.3 million. 2.3 million. million. Yeah. You can't add CDs to that. We are talking about human yes, beings, human right? Beings. Okay, so it's just around 2.3 million. So the question is, these 2.6 million jobs that have been created, are they paying taxes? So this 2.3 million is... Cumulative. Cumulative. I mean... That is b before 2017. All of us. All, all of us. All of that. All of us. But Including the, you, uh, all of us, so, who have so, been employed so, even before... Uh, Probably 1992, let's put it that way, and are still, are still working. So, so that it can't be the case that 2.7 million jobs have been created between 2017 and now. If they have, then it means that they are not captured. In the they are not market. imparting our revenue envelope. Probably they may, I don't know how to put it, whether off balance sheet data or whatever, but I think that there are multiple ways of fact checking the data to see whether they are all telling the same story. And I think that, that is the point that we should be looking at. And then, again, so to say you have created 2.6 million jobs, that's quite heavy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the impact, both in terms of revenue, and apart from that, in terms of even consumption-based taxes, mm -hmm. right? Because as, as, as people exit the universities, enter the labor market, when they, once the salary starts coming, you see that behavior, also, consumption pattern change. would also change all of that. Mm. So I think if you put all these things together, um, the, the vice president is somebody I respect so much, but I'm unable to, 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 to confirm or assume a similar position. Based on the yeah. facts? Based on, based on what I know. I could be wrong, but based on what I know... But you're making little, reference to verifiable data. Yes, and then also if you look at it from in terms of... Um, other sources of information, the unemployment rate and all of that, and the growth spell and the job reach and all of that, I think that we are not there yet. Let's hear from the Vice President exactly what he said and the fact that he made reference to a particular data source. That's why I was asking Dr. Ganiu what that data source is so we can all go and check. But the pairs that, that, that has not been provided as yet. Take a look. If in eight years, with all the challenges, we were do, able to do 2.6 million jobs, it shows, um, by just plain logic and reason, that we will do much more than 2.6 million in the next eight years. I expect us to go to, to, to at least, at least if we proceed on this trajectory for the next eight years, we should, with all of these different aspects come in, I am looking at us moving to create 4 million jobs in the next 8 years. Today he says, there is no link between digitalization and the economy. Right? 
How can that be in this fourth industrial revolution? How can so that's the specific statement from the, the Vice President Flag Borough of the NPP about these 2.6 million jobs created. You made reference to specific data points, data sources that are publicly verifiable and yeah. we can reference. But as we speak, I've been asking a number of people, including Dr. Ganil this morning, about the data source of these 2.6 million jobs. We haven't received it as yet. And so we can only defer to publicly verifiable data to, to fact check or test exactly what the Vice President is talking about. 